Hello tatay, hello nanay, this is Pastor Joey Pagadora and this is Senior Moments to Remember. It's a beautiful Friday and we are looking forward to a great weekend ahead and as we spend time together right now, I would like to encourage you if you have any prayer requests, please type them in the comment section below or if you just want to say hi, please let us know where you are from and we would love to hear from you. Let's open in prayer. Father, we thank you so much for a wonderful time together, for a blessed time together. And I pray that as we have this wonderful time together, let your presence be with us. We thank you, God, for the work that you're doing in our midst. I pray for my brother. I pray for my sister. Let your presence be with them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's open our hearts and have a great time of worship. Good morning. Come and join me in worshiping our wonderful God. Moments to remember, moments to remember. The righteous will flourish like a palm tree, they will grow like a cedar of Lebanon. Moments to remember, moments to remember. Planted in the house of the Lord, they will flourish in the cause of our God. They will still bear fruit in old days, they will stay. Once again, 
Today, this is Pastor Joey, and this is Wow Moment, Wow Meaning, Words of Wisdom. And we know that wisdom is important to you because you have lived it. You have proven it, and now you are enjoying the fruit of wisdom in your life. Our Wow Moment for today will be coming from Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 to 23. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control against such things. There is no law. Now, for several weeks already, we've been talking about the fruit of the Spirit in our lives. All of these virtues being expressed in our relationships. We've talked about love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness. And today, we will be talking about gentleness. What is gentleness? Gentleness, when we look up the meaning of the word, it means meekness. It means mildness, forbearance. It doesn't mean weakness. It doesn't mean lack of strength. No. Actually, gentleness is also defined as strength under control. This gentleness can be expressed in our relationships with people in different situations. For example, when we restore a brother or a sister who was caught in sin, Galatians chapter 6, verse 1. Brothers, if anyone is caught in any transgression, you who are spiritual should restore him in a spirit of gentleness. Gentleness can also be expressed in the way we conduct ourselves every day as we go out, as we live our lives. Ephesians chapter 4, starting in verse 1, I therefore, a prisoner for the Lord, urge you to walk in a manner worthy of of the calling to which you have been called with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love. Now, it doesn't mean that you don't get upset, no. But it means that you are in control of your strength. You don't suddenly blow your top just because something went wrong. When you correct somebody, when you talk to somebody, there is gentleness. There is control. You're not overbearing. You're not loud. There is gentleness. When we correct and instruct even those who oppose us, we are taught in 2 Timothy chapter 2, 25, gently instruct. Don't argue with them. Don't scold them. Don't yell at them. Gently instruct those who oppose the truth. Perhaps God will change those people's hearts. And they will learn the truth. Now also, when you explain the hope that you have inside of you, hope that comes from the Lord, people who are depressed, people who may be despondent already, and they see you still smiling, they see you still having hope, and they ask you about it. How do you respond? First Peter 3.15, But in your hearts, honor Christ the Lord as holy, always being prepared to make a defense to anyone who asks you for a reason for the hope that is in you. Yet do it with gentleness and respect. You don't argue with them. But in gentleness, just explain to them why you have hope in your heart. And that's because of Jesus. Now, in all of these that we read, how do we see gentleness really expressed? It is expressed in the way we talk to people. It is expressed in the way we treat People. It is expressed in how we handle ourselves while we are interacting with people, especially when it comes to the things of God. Inside your home, you're spending extra, extra time with your family right now, talking to your children, to your apo, to your nephews, to your nieces. Let the gentleness 
that comes from the Holy Spirit flow from inside of you. Let it flow to your relationships and let them enjoy the gentleness that comes from in you. And your life, your speech, your deeds, may it all be characterized with that same gentleness that comes from the Holy Spirit. This has been your wow moment. And our prayer for you is that as you continue in wisdom, the days, the weeks, the months, the years ahead of you will even be more fruitful. God bless you. Hello, wonderful exemplars. This is Pastor Paula and welcome to another Sababa Moment. For today, we are going to continue to know more about the Mount of Olives. So the Mount of Olives is usually our first stop when we arrive in Jerusalem. And we love to do the walk down from uh, the Mount of Olives to the Garden of Gethsemane. And the road down from the Mount of Olives to the Garden of Gethsemane is somehow narrow and steep. So because of that, every time we walk there and a car is passing by, we always shout to each other, CAR! And we will uh, stay by the side of the road and a car will pass by. And we are wondering how the drivers there navigate through that narrow and steep road, which is Sababa. And as we go down, our first stop from the road from the Mount of Olives is the Jewish Cemetery and the Dominus Flevit Church. So if you're asking about the Dominus Flevit Church, it is a church uh, with the shape of a teardrop at the top of it, the rooftop commemorating the event in which Jesus wept over the future fate of Jerusalem. And if you remember in Zechariah chapter 14, verse 4, it says here that the Messiah will descend on the Mount of Olives on Judgment Day and enter Jerusalem through the Golden or the Eastern Gate. The Eastern Gate is right now blocked up. And blocked up, at, um, it's in the eastern part of the wall in Jerusalem. It's blocked up with the Muslim cemetery. And um, it is also known as um, Beautiful Gate or Gate of Mercy. And for this reason, for this reason, the Jews always sought to be buried in the Mount of Olives. And because this area serves as one of Jerusalem's main cemeteries with an estimated 150,000 graves. Sababa. And did you know that until the destruction of the temple, the Mount of Olives was a place where many Jews would sleep out under the olive trees? Because as we have said from the past episode, it, is, it was once covered with olive trees during times of pilgrimage. During the siege of Jerusalem, which led to the destruction of the city in AD 70, Roman soldiers from the 10th Legion camped on the Mount. And today... The Mount of Olives is a location of several major sites for the pilgrims like us who go to Israel every year. And that includes the Church of All Nations. So when we get down to the Garden of Gethsemane, we're um, headed towards the Church of All Nations because the Church of All Nations is the one taking care of the Garden of Gethsemane. So we also have there uh, the Church of St. Mary Magdalene. So if you, as you walk down, you will see a church with a golden... Um, a golden onion domes and by the way that's real gold each topped by a tall cross make it one of Jerusalem's most picturesque sites and then the church of Dominus Flevit the church of Paternoster recalling Christ's teaching of the Lord's Prayer so and uh, the Dome of the Ascension so that is a small shrine now a mosque marking the place where Jesus is believed to have ascended to heaven, the garden and grotto of Gethsemane. So that's in, on the western slope of the Mount of Olives. So this is an ancient olive grove identified as the place where Jesus went to pray the night before he was crucified. And the cave where his disciples are believed to have slept. And then the tomb of Mary. So this is a dimly lit below ground church where it says the mother of Jesus was buried. And we hope to climb down the Mount of Olives with you one day soon in Israel. And I am sure it is going to be Sababa. So for today, let us look at Zechariah chapter 14, verse 1 to 9. And if you have your Bible with you, please read it with me in the New International Version. It says here, 
A day of the Lord is coming, Jerusalem, when your possessions will be plundered and divided up within your very walls. I will gather all the nations to Jerusalem to fight against it. The city will be captured, the house is ransacked, and the women raped. Half of the city will go into exile, but the rest of the people will not be taken from the city. Then the Lord will go out and fight against those nations as he fights on the day of battle. On that day, his feet will stand on the Mount of Olives, East of Jerusalem and the Mount of Olives will be split into two from east to west, forming a great valley, with half of the mountain moving north and half moving south. You will flee by my mountain valley, for it will extend to Azel. You will flee as you fled from the earthquake in the days of Uzziah, king of Judah. Then the Lord my God will come and all the holy ones with him. On that day there will be neither sunlight nor cold, frosty darkness. It will be a unique day. A day known only to the Lord, with no distinction between day and night. When evening comes, there will be light. On that day, living water will flow out from Jerusalem, half of it east to the Dead Sea, and half of it west to the Mediterranean Sea in summer and in winter. The Lord will be king over the whole earth, and on that day, there will be one Lord, and His name, the only name. Everybody said, Amen. So this is the future that we are looking forward to, the day where Jesus comes back to take us all home with him and the day that he reigns over all. And he will be the king of kings. Well, he's the king of kings and the Lord of lords. So my dear exemplars, we need to get ready for this by continuing to live our lives. How are we going to be ready for this? By continuing to live our lives for Jesus and to keep on running the race that God has set for us. And that is to fulfill the Great Commission. And what a wonderful sight it will be when Jesus comes in all his glory and splendor to rule and reign over us and be with us physically. Now that is Sababa. Thank you so much, Exemplars, for your time and for listening to our lesson today. And we hope to see you again next time. This is Pastor Paula. Bye! Psalm 91 Those who live in the shelter of the Most High will find rest in the shadow of the Almighty. These I declare about the Lord. He is alone my refuge, my place of safety. He is my God and I trust Him. For He will rescue you from every trap and protect you from deadly diseases. He will cover you with His feathers. He will shelter you with His wings. His faithful promises are your armor, are your armor and protection. Do not be afraid of the terrors of night nor the arrow that flies in the day. Do not tread the diseases that stalks in darkness, nor disaster that strikes at midday. Though a thousand fall at your side, though ten thousand are dying around you, these evils will not touch you. Just open your eyes and see how the wicked are punished. If you make the Lord your refuge, if you make the Most High your shelter, no evil will conquer you, no plague will came near your heart. For He will order His angels to protect you wherever you go. They will hold you up with their hands, so you won't even hurt your foot on a stone. You will trample upon lions and cobras. You will crush fierce lions and serpents under your feet. The Lord says, I will rescue those who love me. I will protect those who trust in my name. When they call on me, I will answer. I will be with them in trouble. I will rescue and honor them. I will reward them with long life and give them my salvation. Amen. Good morning! Welcome to Golden Hour. I'm Pastora Babes. It's time to sing along with me. Come on, let's sing, I Love You, Lord. I love you, Lord. And Oh
Until the next time, God bless. Always to remember. Good morning, I'm Sister Ami. Time for some praise dancing. Please grab a chair and let's warm up. Psalm 149 verse 3, praise His name with dancing, accompanied by tambourine and harp. Come and dance along. Stay fit for service. See you next time. God bless. Always to remember. Hello, this is Pastor Latin and welcome once again to our prayer time. Thank you so much for always allowing us to be part of your life every time you share with us your prayer request. It's always a great privilege to pray for you and see those prayers being answered. So how do we pray? Fervently and with joy. Let us all pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you in the name of Jesus and we are always grateful, O God, for answering our prayers. We are so thankful because of who you are in our lives. Thank you for your graciousness. Thank you for your mercy that is new every morning. Thank you for your goodness, O God. Father, right now we pray for Sister Pitang. Lord, thank you that you will bring healing, complete healing, O God, for Sister Leti Comilias, that you will restore Sister Leti's health in its original condition. Father, we ask, O Lord, that you will touch her body, O Lord, and you will cause her to be restored from the top of her head down to the sole of her feet. And Father, for Sister Belen Gamad, we are thanking you for touching her body as well and healing the arthritis that she has, O God. Thank you, Lord, that this arthritis will have no hold on her body, but she will be delivered from the pain and discomfort of this arthritis, O God. And Father, we also commit to you, O God, her transactions. We believe that she'll be able to close these two transactions, O God, in Jesus' name, as you bless and prosper the work of her hands. And thank you, God, that these transactions will materialize and will bring her a great financial harvest in Jesus' name. And Father, for Sister Lolit Bailon, we are believing as well for the complete healing of her brother and sister, O God, Brother Cesar Rivera, Brother Florente Rivera, and Sister Erlinda Rivera Gueco. And even, Lord, for her husband, Brother Juanito Valion. Father, we ask that 
You will bring healing, O oh God, to them from glaucoma in Jesus' name. Father, touch their eyes right now and let healing flow. Touch their eyes and cause those eyes, O oh God, to be able to see clearly in Jesus' name. Father, we rebuke that glaucoma and we declare complete healing in the powerful name of Jesus. And Father, for Sister Reggie, we lift up to you, Lord God, her BP. We are believing for a normal blood pressure for her and also, God, for her family's complete restoration when it comes to their health and continuous protection that your faithfulness will always be their shield and their rampart and that you will not allow this deadly pestilence to come near their dwelling place and father we also lift up to you sister tess thank you god for healing her from body pain especially her shoulder touch that shoulder oh god and let pain be gone in the name of jesus i also commit to you god her son mark Father, thank you that you will cause change to happen in his life and that, God, he will be delivered from drunkenness. And thank you, God, that he will come to that place of repentance wherein he will experience your reality, wherein he will come to know you as his Lord and personal Savior. Thank you that salvation has come upon the household of Sister Tess. And Father, lastly, for Sister Carmelita Hardino, thank you, God, for healing her from scoliosis. Thank you, Lord, that you will touch her spine and remove the pain, the discomfort, the difficulty she is feeling right now. Thank you, Lord, that she will be delivered from this sickness in the powerful name of Jesus. Father, we honor you and we thank you, God, for answering the prayer needs of your people. We lift them all up to you, knowing that you are good and you delight to see these prayers being answered for your own glory. We give you praise and honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Thank you so much for joining us today. We'll see you again next week for another time of prayer. Thank you so much for joining us today. And we are looking forward to having you join us again next week for another week of Senior Moments to Remember. We've had so much fun with you, worshiping the Lord with you, reading the Word of God with you, praying with you, and just spending time with you. Thank you for the privilege of having time with you. Now, before we go, we'd like to remind you, have fun this weekend. Join the online services, worship with the Lord, and you just enjoy being with Him. And He is just continually working things out for your good. You are special to Him. Now, if you have any prayer requests or if you have any testimony, please type them in the comment section below. We would love to hear from you. Let's close in prayer. Father, we thank you so much for your goodness. And God, I lift up to you, my brother. I lift up to you, my sister. Strengthen them. Let this weekend be just so wonderful as they watch the online services and as they spend time with their families. Lord, let your presence bring joy to their hearts. Thank you for them, O oh God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now you have a blessed, wonderful weekend in the Lord. And we will see you next week for another episode of Senior Moments to Remember. God bless you. Moments to remember. Moments to remember. Moments to remember.